Hello there. Here at Refinitiv, we provide market data for a wide universe of securities and asset classes. We currently have several options to screen assets and securities within our ICON desktop, but increasingly we have seen interest in accessing the same screening capabilities programmatically to improve user workflows and work more efficiently with our data. One of the hardest parts of working with data is making sure that you have all the right data sets that you want to work with. Finding the right universe of securities is often challenging. How do you know that you have all the right ones that you need? Well, today I'd like to discuss with you a relatively new API in our Refinitiv Data Platform suite that is a very powerful tool for screening, the Search API. We have many different apps within ICON that allow you to screen a universe of securities and assets ranging from equities, fixed income, to vessels and commodities. This is our Search app, and it's designed to help you uh, identify each of the advanced search tools that we have for uh, each universe of asset classes that we cover. But the Search API is a unified search tool that allows you to easily screen all the security universes pro programmatically in one tool. The Search family of APIs expose the Icon Search backend web service that is powering many of these different search apps all just by using one REST API. Before I dive into the Search API specifically, I'd like to highlight our developer community at developers.refinitive.com. I highly rec recommend you check out our developer community if you're ever looking for Refinitive API documentation uh, to ask a question to have answered on our Q&A forums regarding any of our APIs, or if you need any tutorials regarding using our APIs or working with financial data. So the Refinitive data platform has the search function or the search API, which covers a large breadth of assets. It covers 35 million instruments, 9 million organizations, 2 million people, 1 million deals, and 400,000 physical assets. And some of the key features of this API includes freeform or Google-like quick search, extensive filtering and ranking control with thousands of properties to filter by, and a metadata service to see what properties are available to filter by or sort by. And so I'm going to demo this in our uh, new and upcoming application called Codebook. And this is essentially a Jupyter environment hosted in the cloud within Icon. So right here, uh, to start, what you're going to do is you're going to import the Refinitive data platform. And then you're going to open a session uh, using rdp.open desktop session. And this will authenticate your session uh, with ICON so that you have all the right authentication needed to interact with the API. So the way that the search API works is it identifies a matching set of documents which satisfy the caller's criteria. And then you could sort it or select a subset of the matches to then display. And by document, it could be anything from an interest rate, an, a, a person, an organization, or a quote. So to use the uh, search API, all it is is the rdp.search function. And uh, by default, you can just quickly search uh, any string that is like a phrase or a ticker or something like here, Tesla, and you'll be able to get every single result that comes back that is related to this natural language search. So you can see here we have organizations such as Tesla, as well as a bunch of different equity quotes as well. And by default, you have the perm ID, RIC, business entity, PI, and document title returned to you as columns, but you can modify that uh, to specific and more relative columns or data items if you wish. I'll discuss that shortly. So on top of, on top of that, search can be performed using a query, which is what we did above, which is a natural language like search, or using filters, which is a structured search. But no matter which type of search you're going to do, it's important to specify the view parameter to narrow your universe so that you can specify you're only looking for a certain type of security or asset. And by default, it's set to search all so that it will cover all of these universes. But it's important to set the view to a particular universe to narrow your search and get more accurate results. And this ranges from equity quotes to fixed income quotes to people to vessels right here. So to do a queried search uh, very quickly, first we'll set the view to people. So we only search for people. And then the query function is essentially that same natural language search you saw above. You could type in a phrase, a keyword, 
um, and it'll search our uh, our entire database of all the data we have available uh, and return information relevant to your keyword or your search. And we also have fil structured search, which instead of using the query parameter, uses the filter parameter. And here we're going to use the view GovCorp instruments, and we are going to filter for securities that have a coupon rate greater than 2% and less than 4%. And as you notice up here, only 10 results were returned, but you can increase the number of results that get returned by specifying the top parameter to a number that will then output up to that number. And I believe the limit is 10,000 rows. So you'll see here, there are 1,000 results that were returned, and likely that means that there are more than 1,000 results but it hit its limit of a thousand right here. I also want to talk about the metadata function. The metadata service is intended to complement the search service, and that's because many of the parameters that you use for this for the search service require you to call uh, to specify document prop document properties uh, with which to do something. Search by document property, sort by it, or group by it. And so the metadata function shows you each of the properties that you can use to search, sort, group, or navigate by for each view. And all you need to do is pass in a view to use it. So now I want to show some uh, real live examples of how the API would be useful using a variety of different asset classes. So first, we're going to look at fixing, fixed income. So we're looking for US corporate bonds that have a minimum outstanding amount of $1 million in the biotech industry, maturing no earlier than 10 years. So you'll see we've set the search view to GovCorp instruments. Then we're filtering by industry, biotech and medical research, maturity date greater than 10 years from this year, issuer country name is the United States, and the amount outstanding is a million dollars. And you'll see here that we've used the select parameter as well. So what the select parameter does is you could choose which columns or properties you want to output uh, when you run your request. So here we're going to output not only the document title and RIC, but the issuer rating, industry name, maturity date, and so on. You can see here, rather than some of those uh, columns that may have been unimportant to you, you now have all of the values that you may be interested in. And all it requires is for you to specify it in the select parameter. So now I want to show how this API could be used in action rather than just taking it further from just searching uh, within a universe. Now, what can you do with it? Well, we're going to look at some vessel data. And I'm looking for all the tankers in the Gulf of Mexico, and I'm curious to see their origin port and origin port, destination port, their flag, among a variety of other things. So here we're going to look at vessel physical assets as our view, and we're going to look at the asset type leaf to be tanker and the region to be Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we're going to select all of these values to output. And importantly, we're going to take we're going to get the IMO number. So you'll see here we've run the request and we have all of the ships that are tankers in the Gulf of Mexico. There are roughly 42. And we're going to take all of the IMO uh, numbers for each ship and so put it into a list. And then we're going to pass this list into this function I've created that will map the uh, path or the journey of these ships since 20, uh, May 15th, 2020. So you can see here. These are the current paths of the first 10 ships in our list, which could be especially useful if you're maybe trying to monitor political events and monitor certain ships. You can do that now. When, now that you've narrowed your search down from a universe of all the vessels that we have out, um, on the oceans to only 10. And one of the last things I want to show you is um, the group by function as well. So we're going to use interest rates to demonstrate it. So we're looking for repo rates, and we want to group by central bank and only show three three rates per central bank if applicable. So here we're going to use indicator quotes as our view. We're going to do a query, so a natural language search of the phrase repo rate. And now we're going to group by the central bank name, and we're going to specify group count of three. Now what this means is we're going to group all the results by central bank, as you'll see here. Uh, it's organized so that they're grouped by the central bank but we're only gonna return up to three results for each um, group. So you'll see if there are more than three or, or there are three results, there will only be three results returned. And so this is great if you're really just trying to get a subset of certain data and you're trying to group the data by similar properties, you can easily do that using the group by and group count function.
So now that you've seen the search API in use, you could see how the solution has made it so simple to screen across the universe of all the different uh, data, data that we offer. And I will provide this notebook on GitHub uh, for you to be able to access if you are a Refinitiv customer so that you can get started uh, screening for securities and universe, our universe of data programmatically. Thank you for listening today. Take care.